All right, YouTube, how's it going? Uh, we're here with a uh, fun deck that I made. Um, it's going to be Dark Reflect. Uh, during the past couple days, I've been playtesting a lot with some friends, trying out a couple of Reflect builds, Sylvia builds and such, and uh, this one kind of just uh, caught my eye. I really liked playing this deck. It was really fun to play, and I think with a little bit of maintaining and tuning, it could be a competitive deck. So, yeah, our Jailers Reflect. Um... A lot of you guys should know what this does, it does a lot of stuff, but uh, mainly what we're going to be using it for is um, on its ruler side, you know, of course, drawing one and putting one on the bottom of our deck. Um, it's basically tutoring. Uh, you can kind of carve your hand into the perfect hand that you need. Uh, and then also uh, resting a target resonator, at, or recovering a target resonator at the end of turn. Uh, this can be very useful since we're playing... Um, Mephistopheles, and it's usually going to be our only resonator on the board in late game, and to just swing with that and then recover it uh, so that they can't just swiftness bah him at you for game or something like that, so it's really, really good. Um, and then, of course, this ruler side, pretty self-explanatory, uh, negating spells, you know, if they're about to split us to death, um, just negate that, and then also um, a really good combo with this deck and what you're going to be doing most of the time is removing two magic counters from it and returning a target resonator to its owner hand. Now, we're going to use that as a form of not only getting rid of board presence on their side, but actually removal. I'll get into that later. So, um, that's the J-Ruler. And then it's a uh, Dark Reflect is what I'm calling the deck right now. Um, basically, we're just playing Dark and Red with a heavy focus on Dark. So, six Dark Stones, four Dual Stones of Red and Black. And then the... Uh, Resonators, we're running four Rasputin. Uh, it's Dark's best one drop, so pretty self explanatory. And we're going to be doing a lot of incarnating, hopefully, um, as a sort of removal from their hand with um, Rasputin. And then we're also going to be running Dark Feria. Uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about this card. I kind of put it in as a four of just because I want to see how it does. Um, it seems like it's really good because it's a two drop five five. But you can pay an awakening cost of 2 black, so a 4 drop that destroys a target resonator when it enters your field. So it's kind of a 2 for 1. Um, I mean, if you're getting rid of something on their field and this is staying on the board, you know, you're already at a card advantage. And that's kind of what this uh, deck aims to do, is just get slow card advantage until you can just hit them with meth every single turn and uh, be confident that they can't do anything to you in return. So... Uh, it's just it's just pretty good, and then um, also it's another target for uh, this baby right here, not the top. Um, the only low cost resonators that we play are Rasputin and Dark Feria. So yeah, you know, playing Rasputin turn one, playing Dark Feria turn two to second and not the top. It's it's okay. Uh, Dark Feria is not going to do anything for us if we just play it and sack it. So it's not the ideal matchup, but. Um, we're going to try to just get two Rasputin instead, which is possible to do with Reflect. You know, you get a, get the chances to draw the extra Rasputin out with uh, his ruler ability. So, and then the discard is definitely going to be handy with us. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of discarding in this deck with some spells that I'm going to show you in a second. And why, why I think that's so good and why I kind of like this uh, deck idea is because you can bounce Resonators they control to their hand and then just single them out and discard them with cards like Narlath the and uh, Scorn of Dark Alice and such. And you can basically um, just remove a lot of their options. Um, then we also run three Mephs. This is the win condition of the game. The only way that we actually uh, deal damage. I mean, yeah, we have the Narlath the and such like that, but... Uh, they can get removed pretty easily. Um, this, uh, at least, can deal them some life points if they do somehow remove it. And if not, you know, it's a huge swinger. Um, combos well with uh, Rasputin, of course, to keep the Nautilus Ateps on the field uh, by just sacking Rasputin every turn. And just a really strong card. It's good because we can also search it out with Refrain um, uh, to make sure that we are able to drop it turn 4 every single time. And then the last resonator is Yogg-Soth. Uh, <clears throat> at first I didn't put this in because, you know, we don't have that many targets of resonators. You know, you don't really want to be sacking your Narlathoteps and your Mephs because they're really hard to get out. Well, 
not at the top, it's not that hard to get out, but you know, you want to keep these on the board. They're they're pretty high beaters. Um and Dark Fairies are kinda of slow to get out on the board. You know, to sack three Dark Fairies is gonna be a turn six, so pretty hard, but uh the Rasputins do make this a viable target, and I feel like it's a one up because you can search it with Reflect if you need to, and there's a lot of uh decks out there right now that just rely really heavy on two costs. Uh, Reflect Alice's World is one of them. You know, they play Cheshire's, Elvish Priest, uh, Morgiana's, Gretel's, like the whole shebang. And you can basically just wipe their whole board with this, and um, they can't really counter it with Reflect. Uh, I had Dark Pulse in here at one point, but then I did play against a Reflect Alice's World, and they just negated it. Um, so it, it really wasn't useful. Uh, but Yogg-Soth, they really don't have an answer for, unless they Zeke's, which you can, of course, negate with your Reflect. So, there is a way to play with it where you can basically guarantee to clear the whole board, which is pretty good. Uh, it can also help against Bahamut, because Bahamut, uh, I feel, is going to actually be a pretty pretty good for the first couple of weeks of this set, while people are trying to figure out what builds they like, because people are going to tend to build towards the slower combo, uh, combo decks, I feel like. So Bahamut might be able to sneak in for the win. Um... Anyways, let's get on to spells. We were running two Crime and Punishment and three Rapid Decay. Uh, <clears throat> pretty self-explanatory. I mean, Crime and Punishment is really good because if you do play against that Bahamut, you know, uh, <clears throat> if they swing with Bahamut, Crime and Punishment is not really that played of a card. It used to be, but now it's uh, it's kind of you know unexpected. And you can get rid of their Leviathans, you know, when they sack for Imperishable and stuff, and it just buys you a turn basically. Uh, and then if somehow they don't have Leviathan or Fire Resonator, you know, you can kill the Bahamut, which is going to win you game, because uh, you can shut down all other aspects of their deck. And it's just also really good because it's a one-cost removal of most things that attack you. Um, so yeah, it's just a good tempo swing. And speaking of tempo, you know, Rapid Decay, it's a great card. There are tons of great uh, two-drop or less um, Resonators out there. And, you know, this can kill Lancelot, this can kill uh, Guinevere, you know, of course they're going to sack it, but this can kill a lot of OP cards out there, and I just feel like it's an underrated card right now. Um, not really sure why it's not seen any play, but I, I, it's been very useful in the testing that I've done. And then we're also going to be playing four Scorn of Dark Alice. This is also something that can combo with Reflect. Um, if they have a problem, uh, if they have a problem Resonator, such as a Gwyber that they got out uh, really early or something like that, you can just bounce it to the hand with Reflect and use Scorn on your turn to discard it. So basically the whole idea of it is that it's a one for one because you're just using the magic counters on Reflect to bounce it to hand and you're playing this card to get rid of one of their cards. So it is a pure one for one as long as you have magic counters, which two magic counters is not very hard to get. And it basically can be used as removal from the board, because if you're bouncing something from the board and adding it to hand and then discarding it from the hand to graveyard, you basically just put it from the field to graveyard. And that's the same thing that Stony to Death does, uh, yeah, Stony to Death does, but this is one cost less, and like it can also be used on turn one, even if you haven't bounced anything to hand. Um, and uh, for, for instance, I played against the Bahamut deck, and I played this turn one, I went first, and he had mulliganed hard for the Chituga egg combo, obviously. And I removed the egg from their, his hand, and he had two Chituga in hand. And it kind of just hit him like, wow, what do I do now? Because his combo's gone, and he just wasn't really expecting it. So it can definitely throw off some decks' combos and such, and it's just a really good card. Next, we have four Flames of Outer World and four Stones to Death. Uh, good tempo cards, you know, destroys anything that they have, basically. Uh, and Flame of the Outer World, I basically built this deck red-black because I, I built it mono-black at first and realized that I had no way to deal with J-Rulers. And that's where um, Crime and Punishment and Flame of Outer World comes into play. It's our one way to really deal with J-Rulers besides Mef, uh, and it's just really, really helpful. Just good removal. Next up, we have three Spiral of Despair. We can use the combo with Reflect to bounce multiple targets back into the hand with using Change the World. So, you know, we can bounce bounce one by removing two magic counters. If we have a Change of the World out on the field, uh, remove a magic counter, recover this, remove two counters. So all you need for this combo is five magic counters, which is very, very easy to get. You can get that in two turns. 
uh, if you have an Orbao on the field. And you just put two cards in their hand by uh, using basically only Reflect. And then you could just play a Spiral of Despair on your next turn. And they can't, you know, quick cast, or they can't instant them because they're resonators. So unless you bounced a feed scene or something to hand, you can basically get a two for one going with the Spiral of Despair guaranteed. And even if they like try to play out their hand really fast so you can't use your Spirals of Despair, you just bounce the stuff back into your hand and it becomes a double stoning to death almost, which is just really good in my opinion. Um, and then yeah, the four or pretty self-explanatory. I mean, it combos excellent with Refrain. So that's the deck, guys. Uh, I don't have a side deck prepared because I built this more of a fun de of a fun deck, and I don't really know what's out in the meta yet, so I don't really know what to prepare for. If I had to build a side, I guess maybe put some more um, Yog Soths in there. Definitely some Dark Pulses because I feel like Dark Pulse is better with this deck because you're not using your mana up um, all the time. I mean, if you have the choice between destroying their whole board with Dark Pulse versus dropping a Meth, like most of the time you're going to destroy the whole board. But since Refrain is a card, <laughs> you can't really rely on Dark Pulse. So um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing this, and I hope that you guys can you know, build it, edit it. Uh, I'm sure there's better builds out there, but uh, let me know what you guys think. Build it. Edit it for me.